Welcome to Safe Space right here on Women Radio 91.7. Trust your day has been fantastic so far. Today on Safe Space, we are looking at coronavirus and rise in gender-based violence, a call to action. And as usual, we have our resident Safe Space psychologist talking about Dr. Jessica Okolawo. Good evening to you. Good evening, Dr. How are you? I'm fine. In case you don't know, Safe Space on Women Radio 91.7 provides an enabling environment for healthy conversations on mental health. On Safe Space, we aim to give light in the midst of depression, anxiety, stress, and other mental health issues that relate with having a mentally balanced woman. This edition of Safe Space is an initiative of Women Radio 91.7 under the Women's Voice and Leadership Project is in partnership with Action Aid Nigeria and supported by Global Affairs Canada. Please do well to call us on our number 07000 917 917. The text message line is 0703 1756 537. Do remember that this is a safe space so you can decide to be anonymous. Dr. Jessica Okolawo, I would like you to give a brief overview on how COVID-19 coronavirus has caused a rise in gender-based violence and basically how it affects the mental health of women before we start taking calls from our esteemed listener. At this time of the global uh, COVID-19 pandemic, home is supposed to be the safest place for everyone, right? They told us social distancing, stay at home, they closed schools and, you know, only kept essential services open. However, people that are experiencing gender-based violence, including domestic violence, Social distancing can mean being trapped inside the house with their abuser. Um, domestic violence tends to increase during these times because you're actually in close quarters with them, right? So you can't go to work, you can't, um, you know, maybe go out to go visit someone. Some of the things, the measures that could have been put in place prior in order to kind of move away from that situation. Um, so like you rightfully said, us being at home um, has now potentially provided an increase in the domestic violence uh, cases. You know, but what do women do during this time? Because the government has instructed us to stay at home. Um, so, but that also means now that you have to be home with this person that's providing or, you know, putting you in the position to, you know, be abused. So what do we do as women and how can we encourage one another? I think the best thing um, that we can do is literally coming up with a safety plan. So literally it's a safety plan um, that you put in place, whether it's with yourself or your children, depending on their age, in order to, you know, possibly prevent um, domestic violence. Now, in some cases where it's happening, for example, one of the things that I would tell someone is to identify your partner's use and level of force so that you can assess the risk of physical danger to you and your children. Right, so you, you know some of the things that could potentially trigger this person. Um, so kind of understanding the level of force so that you can protect yourself. Also identifying safe areas of the house where you know there are no weapons um, and there are easy ways to escape. So if an argument occurs, um, you can try to access those areas. Some of the things that we need to keep in mind during this is if you're in the home with the abuser, a lot of monitoring is going on. So they may monitor phone calls and you know, you're know you not allowed to reach out for help and support. Um, so that's why I believe putting this safety plan in, in place is very important or also looking for people that you can trust and speak to. So whether it's, you know, a family friend that the person may not um, may not raise alarm in order to just call and to talk to. And on the other end, for us that are actually receiving and listening, you know, ensuring the person that it's not their fault and it's okay. Um, and it's okay to talk about what's happening. So I think that we just need to be creative during this time of isolation and staying at home to provide alternatives for this individual to seek out and get support. I would like to ask, if there's women that are being shot in your house just because of COVID-19, would they not contract COVID-19 from anywhere? Pretty much the, the essence of the government, you know, providing this shutdown and restrictor movement is so that we don't move into large spaces where we could potentially contact it. So actually staying at home is the safest <laughs> way to not um, contract the virus. Um, because if you go into a place, you can't see it, 
on someone, even if someone is um, kind of showing symptoms, whether they're sneezing or coughing, etc. Some people actually may be doing that that don't have the virus. So the safest place is your home. Um, so literally, if you're not washing your hands and you're around other people or you're in close proximity of a person that is sneezing, um, so literally it's the liquid or um, that comes out of a person's nose or mouth when they sneeze could potentially land on your body. Now, for example, you may touch your hand after it happens because you don't realize how many, you know, literally ounces of this little, little liquid is being exposed. Touch your hand. Later on, you may now get to your house and then touch your face or wipe your nose. And literally, this is how the virus is continuing, you know, to move about. And then after that, you're, you know, you go to a, a place with another person that's around you that isn't aware that you have it because you're also not aware. And then you potentially put that person in danger. So the safest place, you know, as the government has said, and I believe that the Lagos State government is doing an amazing job in making sure that, you know, we all stay safe, closing down schools and churches and limiting, you know, the exposure to one another. It's just for us now to take heed of that advice and ensure that we limit our um, exposure to people, especially people that are not within, you know, our home at the moment. This uh, issue of the uh, corona, um, I want to thank the government for how they are fighting and making sure that they are getting everyone, giving everyone uh, confidence. Is it not good for our government to provide some nurses and doctors so that they can go house to house to check? It will help, it will help to find out some people that have been inside that, ha that is having that uh, corona to help to fish out some people that is hiding. She is saying that can the testing be done from house to house? Dr. Jessica, would you like to react on that? Sure. I think, I think the best thing for us to do is, honestly, is for us to consider our life versus livelihood. I think what everyone is saying is, okay, but what about people that, you know, have to kind of get money, make money, they still need to go out and fend for their families, you know, but if you're not alive, you can't do that. But so everyone probably needs to shift their focus on livelihood and then focus on what's important, which is your life. Um, so as Nigerians, we're very strong-willed, we're very determined. There is no situation that's literally been able to hold us down. So understanding that this too will pass, but for right now, for us to adhere to the advisement um, you know, of the Lagos State Government and just for us to protect ourselves and be safe. Anyone inside or outside can contract it. So it depends on if where you are and especially if you're in contact with someone that has symptoms or has been affected and does not know. Um, so, you know, being outside, we expose ourselves to people that are, you know, getting off of pub public transportation, that are going into markets and grocery stores, etc. So everyone is at risk. Um, I don't think there's anyone that's exempt um, from potentially, you know, being um, infected with coronavirus, but it's for us to continue to remain safe during the times. The disruption of social and protective networks and decreased access to services can um, you know, literally put women at risk for violence. So as distancing measures are put in place and people are encouraged to stay at home, the risk of intimate partner violence is, is likely to increase. Um, so for example, women have less contact with family or friends who may have you know, been able to provide that support and protection for violence. Um, perpetrators may use restrictions due to COVID um, to exercise power and control over their partners to further reduce access to services, help or psychological support. Um, you know, some people may restrict, um, you know, soap and hand sanitizers, all these things that we're asked to do, you know, you know, you know, by the World Health Organization in order to protect ourselves. Um, so it's a breeding ground because you're in close proximity and quarters, you know, so we've only kind of been, you know, in isolation or, or in our homes for probably about four or five days. You know, when this starts to get to a week and two, um, there's loss of income. Um, you know, you're always home with this person. There's there's no space um, just because you want to, you know, kind of be safe and not go out. Um, there is potential job losses and, you know, economic crises. So there are all these things are all breeding grounds that will eventually produce stress. You know, some people say they find their work as like a, a safe space uh, from the stress at home, while some people find their home as a safe space from the stress at work. You know, how do this particular set of people who find their workplaces as a safe space and uh, don't find their home as a nest, so, so to speak, for them, how do they juggle this period? I think the best thing to do is honestly, um, you know, to create an environment 
like you were at work. So if work was your safe space, um, whether it's finding a place in the room or, you know, kind of making a schedule and creating a timetable for you to be in a place where you can sit down and do work as, as rightfully needed. I think that's very important, um, you know, because it still provides us with that structure that we need in order to succeed. Um, so whether it's setting a timetable between 10 and 12 and between four and six every day, these are the days that I'm going to sit and do what I need to do as, as in regards to work. So set up your environment like it were like you were at work with a notepad and a pencil and you know with your laptop and books and things that you're actually able to do during during the time of work this is safe space and is brought to you by action aid nigeria an initiative of women radio 91.7 and dr jessica okolawa is a safe space psychologist and of course when it comes to mental health issues and every other thing that has to do with um, issues of anxiety stress depression dr jessica is someone you can talk to tonight so if you have any concerns if you have questions to share please go ahead and call us on 07000-917-917. I want to know the symptoms of this sickness to know if anyone around you can contact it. So literally, if you have a fever, cough, or difficulty breathing, um, it's best to seek medical um, care early. Um, and like we've heard literally around the world, you know, just because you cough and sneeze doesn't necessarily mean that you have, you know, contacted the virus, but it's good um, that you, you know, reach out to medical support if you're feeling unwell. So if you begin to have a temperature or a fever, you're coughing, um, or you're having any difficulty breathing, it's best to seek medical attention. My concern is that this uh, the coronavirus is involved. We have been inside things on Monday and we have not been going out. So I am just want to ask for help. That's what is the thing that we can do so that we can be able to come out for it. You know, like I said, oftentimes when there is an, either an epidemic or a pandemic that's going on in the world, there are some other cases that are now receiving less attention. So like, for example, right now, everything that's on everyone's mind is COVID-19. Coronavirus, you hear it all over. I mean, because it's literally affecting the world. But the thing is, there's still underlying issues that have been present, right? That aren't being addressed or now will, will not receive that light like they were before. Um, since we're social distancing, it's very difficult now to, you know, get that extra support that you would rightfully need or be entitled to normally in a domestic violence case. Um, so now it's turning to people that are within our close proximity or via phone or social media that you can trust, um, you know, that has empathy and actually can listen to your concerns. So that's why I said on the other end too, it's for us that are being on the listening ear to provide that, that, that form of solace, that form of comfort and understanding to someone that is calling us, not necessarily assuming that you understand what they're going through, but being there with them to, to lend a listening ear. Emergency hotline numbers. So people will call them now for everything, whether they believe they're experiencing symptoms of COVID-19 or if they know someone or to report large gatherings. You also have people that are trying to use that, that number, you know, for um, to reach emergency personnel due to fire, domestic violence. Everyone now literally is, is seeking the support of these emergency telephone number accesses in order to get support or help. So you may find that numbers are jammed, lines are busy. Um, but I think, like I said, also having a plan, you know, so plan A could be trying to reach a medical personnel. If that doesn't work, what is plan B and plan C? Just so that we don't ensure that we don't um, you know, kind of stick to this one access of help, but we look into other ways that we could potentially, you know, gain gain support. But what we time. need to focus on is the problem at hand. So like we said, COVID-19 is, is an infectious disease, you know, caused by this re recent discovery of coronavirus. Um, and it's very serious. It's spreading rapidly. Um, I mean, you've heard cases of countries that have had two and three reports and now they're, you know, in the, in the hundreds of thousands of numbers. So we need to ensure that we understand the seriousness of this. Yes, isolation can be very difficult, especially for people that are used to getting up, moving on about day by day. So there's some things that you could potentially do, whether it's taking a walk in a close proximity area. So ensuring that if you do kind of go out of your house, probably staying within your compound or within the confinements of, you know, your front door, um, you know, getting fresh air, you know, so yes, they're saying that we should limit movement, but also look for other ways. So whether it's opening a, a, a window or stepping outside to play with your kids in 
in a confined area and ensuring that if you come in contact with anyone, you stay, you know, kind of, you have that one meter distance from them. Um, like I said, it, it's very important because a lot of people are exhibiting symptoms such as fever, tiredness, and dry cough or aches and pains, um, but they're not realizing that that's what it is or they may be and decide that they don't want to say anything or it may be due to something else. So the safety measures that have been put in place by the Lagos State Government is to show that we're all protected. But there's things that you could do. Create a movie time. I mean, this is the time of isolation, but it's also a time for us to come together as families. Um, you know, I believe that, you know, it's, it's, it's literally a time for us to self-reflect on what we deem important, which is livelihood. And now that has all been restricted and taken away in some form or measure. So spending time with your children, getting to find out what their likes are, spending time with your partner, um, you know, doing creative things, whether it's teaching your children how to cook, we need to use this time wisely. Like I said, for the woman that spoke about isolation, if it's moving out, within the com you know the, the comfort of your home right within your front door you know not moving too far because like we said coronavirus spreads um you know because of other people that have the virus so if you come in contact with someone you could potentially you know contact it that's why it's important to stay at least one meter three feet away from a person who is sick you know so finding other means um to 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 help during this time of boredom and isolation is very important i would like to know what's your recommendation on strategies to pre to prevent a possible rise in gender-based violence and how can people who are involved in it at this moment how can they report like i was saying earlier when we got on i think um the important thing to do right now is, you know, providing safety while living with a partner um, that, you know, potentially is an abusive partner. Um, so I'm going to kind of list some things that I believe that could potentially help. Um, you know, every situation is different, but hopefully one or two of these things are practices that could potentially, you know, work for you. Um, so like I said, um, identify safe areas of the house where there are no weapons um, and there are ways to ex escape. So if an argument occurs, you try to move to those areas. Um, I would advise you not to run to where the children are you know as your partner may also hurt them as well um, if violence is unavoidable make yourself a, t a small target dive into a corner or cor curl up into a ball with your face protected and your arms around each side of your head and your fingers intertwined um, so this literally provides a small target um, if possible have a phone accessible at all times and know the numbers you can Call let your trusted help. friends and neighbors know of, of your situation and develop a plan or visual signal when you need help um, also teach your children how to get help so for example if there's a safe word and by a safe word if I say color if I say purple that's a safe word and you teach your children that if you hear me say purple that means that we're in danger and I need you to get support or help so uh, in, inform your children of creating a safe word in this you know time of domestic violence potentially that's going on so they can pretty much say this um, when you say it, they can know that that means that there's danger um, you know, practice how to get out safely. Practice with your children, you know, when your spouse is not around. It's important to keep weapons like guns or knives or anything locked away so they're inaccessible as much as possible. Um, you know, try not to wear scarves or long jewelry, things that can be used to potentially strangle you. For example, if you have long hair, if you have braids, ensure that your hair is packed up, um, you know, in a bun or in, you know, in braided up tight so that, you know, you're, you're I'm, I'm not saying that domestic violence is right because it's a crime and it's not good and it, it doesn't feel good to have to go through that. But let's ensure that we protect ourselves as women, you know, so if you know that this is a constant thing that's going on, like I said, around this time, make sure that your hair is tied back, ensure that you're not wearing long scarves or things that could potentially use to hurt you you're not well. alone and what's going on is, is, is not okay and that women are here to support you during this time um uh, you know i extend my apologies um you know for, for the experience that you're going through and yes like you rightfully said you know there's no excuse for domestic violence um but during these times stress is, is 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 a trigger and being home not being able to go to work you know understanding that jobs could potentially being lost and there's no source of income that are coming in could be potential stressors but that does not mean that domestic violence is acceptable that does not give a man or even a woman the right to put their hands on their spouses you know because we talk a lot about women but men also go through this as well um you know so we there's no excuse there's no rightful um, way in order to express this. Um, it's wrong for you to put your horns. Yeah, 
we shouldn't pin it down to financial challenges or you know staying at home and being isolated domestic violence is not right in any way shape or form so like i say our hearts go out to you we women stand together with you during this time and like you rightfully said it is what it is but i listed some of the things that could potentially be resources or strategies that you could use you know just to protect yourself during this time i would also employ that we as women during this time and men whoever is going through this um that we ensure that we also don't add to the agitations and when i say that i mean if you see that this person is escalating in their anger or their voice for us to just kind of step back and calm down and and also ensure that we're not um you know you know because people at this time could say well this person provoked me to do this so we also need to remain calm during this time you know because the pressures are a lot that doesn't mean that the pressures are a reason to be you know to hit or to cause physical violence to another person all right that's our package today on the program talking about a safe space special i want to say thank you to dr jessica okonlawa the founder and psychologist at excella care for speaking to us on safe space again today thank you so much for having me all right women are the most vulnerable during this pandemic and they face greater risk and even threat while in isolation in their various homes so immediate actions must be taken as regards their safety and protection from gender-based violence It's against this backdrop that women radio 91.7 in partnership with action aid nigeria is advancing a movement for action towards reducing the risk of gender-based violence during this COVID-19 pandemic. Safe space is an enabling environment, enabling space for on radio for healthy conversations on mental health. And it holds every Friday right here on Women Radio Night 1.7 at 6 p.m. Bye-bye.